Now we welcome you back here to the top of the third here at Joe Wolf Field. Peter Lanou back on the hill facing the bottom three, the bottom third of the batting order for the Blue Sox here. The Seville Cats with a one nothing lead, but they've stranded five base runners in this game. Robert Ambrose alongside Mike Lord. Here's the pitch from Peter Lanou. That misses outside for ball one to Starkin. 0-1, or 1-0. And now the 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one, one and one. Starkin hitting 280 on the season so far. He has scored five runs. He has a triple and three home runs and 17 RBIs to his credit this season. The 1-1 misses 2-1. and one. He's at or near the top of the NECBL and RBIs and far ahead of everybody else on the Blue Sox. And the 2-1. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two and two. Bullpen now busy for the Blue Sox. You mentioned last inning it didn't seem busy at the time for either team and now the Blue Sox have a man warming up. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Peter Lanou. That misses and the count is full. Stockton struggled early, striking out a lot, chasing pitches like that most recent pitch in the first pitch. His plate discipline, his patience have gotten much better since. And the payoff pitch. Grounded to first. Noah Vaughn will field it. He will step on the bag one away. Nice play by Vaughn because that ball, once it got on the dirt, it didn't take the high hop he expected, and he reacted quickly and got down and swooped up that ball before it got under his legs, a la Bill Buck during Game 6 of the 86 World Series. <laughs> Certainly a lot of Red Sox fans around this area trying to forget about that. Hard to believe that was 30 years ago this year. Now the pitch misses up and in to Moore. 1-0. and oh. Vaughn once again positioned perfectly just like a lot of the Seabull Cats are and that's why their defense is so good this year. The 1-0 oh, that's popped up. Three Seabull Cats giving chase. It'll be Edward House making the catch two away. Well the Steeple Cats are making me look like a prophet because I said at the top of the show that they're trademark historically has been their pitching, but more so their defense, and it's a bonus for the Steeplecats that the hitting has been outstanding for them. Yeah, and the Steeplecats getting the bats going here in this game, one run off, four hits. So the number nine hitter in Leftridge up now for the Blue Sox, and that misses for ball one, one, and oh. And I'll tell you one other team who's very good defensively, the Laconia Muskrats. Siebel Cats fell to the Muskrats 6-5 to five on Saturday night right here at Joe Wolf Field. In a very good, well-played game that just a couple things here and there in that game that did not go the Siebel Cats' way ended up being costly. A ball and a strike on Leftridge. Siebel Cats shut out the Winnipesaukee Muskrats 8 to nothing up in Laconia in the fifth game of the season. That swung on and missed for strike two, one and two on Leftridge. That was also, at the time, the Steeple Cats' first road win of the year, Mike. Always important to get that. The Blue Sox have a winning record on the road and the 500 record at home. It's interesting when teams are better on the road than they are at home. Because I told Coach John Rayola, I said, if now the Blue Sox win the division, they would be awarded home field disadvantage. Because they'll play more games at home, but they do better on the road anyway. Right. And the 2-2 is grounded to third. C.J. Price throws it across, and the inning is over. Nine up, nine down for Peter Lanou so far. We head to the bottom of the third. one nothing Steeplecats. Back after this on the NECBL Broadcast Network.